scientist, I am Atom. Join me in this adventure where we will discuss the basic electron shell model of the atom and the electron configuration of atoms from hydrogen to calcium, which is atomic numbers 1 to 20. To understand the electron shell model, let us first understand the layout of the periodic table. The periodic table has seven periods, which are the seven horizontal rows. The lanthanides are part of period 6 and the actinides are part of period 7. There are 18 groups or families which are the vertical columns. Each square or box on the periodic table represents an element and contains valuable information about that element. The one or two letters is the element symbol. For example, uppercase H for hydrogen, HE for helium, as you can see the second letter is lowercase, C for carbon and O for oxygen. The name of the element is written below the symbol. The whole number located above the element symbol is the atomic number. And atomic number equals the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. And as we all know, number of protons equals the number of electrons because an atom is electrically neutral. Elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic number on the periodic table. The decimal number at the bottom is the atomic mass in AMU or atomic mass units. The electron shell model is based on Bohr's planetary model of the atom which he proposed in 1913. According to the Bohr model, electrons orbit the nucleus in discrete energy levels or shells. You can review the detailed Bohr atomic model in my previous video called Evolution of the Atomic Models, link in the description box below. In this lesson, we will focus on the first 20 elements of the periodic table from hydrogen to calcium. For smaller atoms, atomic numbers 1 to 20, the basic shell model effectively explains the general trends in electron distribution and chemical behavior. However, when a more detailed and accurate description of the electron configuration is required, especially for larger atoms, the consideration of orbitals becomes essential, which needs to be discussed in a separate lesson by itself. Let's look at the relationship between the period number and the number of shells of an atom. Period number corresponds to the number of shells of the atom. For example, elements in the first period have one shell, those in the second period have two, those in the third period have three shells, and so on. For example, fluorine is located in period two of the periodic table. Therefore, fluorine has two electron shells. Shell number and maximum capacity of electrons. Again, let us look at the first three periods of the periodic table. Just as period one has two elements, shell number one can hold up to two electrons. Just as PD2 has 8 elements, shell number 2 can hold up to 8 electrons. Just as PD3 has 8 elements, shell number 3 can hold up to 8 electrons. Electron configurations of atoms 1 to 20. Hydrogen has one shell since it is in PD1 and it has one electron. The element symbol represents the nucleus of the atom. Shell 1 is closest to the nucleus and has the lowest energy. Electrons can be shown as crosses or dots. Helium has one shell since it is also in period 1 and it has two electrons. Lithium has two shells since it is in period 2 and it has three electrons. The shells are filled from the inside out. In other words, the lowest energy level is filled before electrons are added to the next shell. Calcium has four shells since it is in period four and it has 20 electrons. Now repeat this for all other atoms from element number four to 19. The electron configurations can be done using the shorthand notation where we write the configurations rather than draw them. Calcium will be 2882. Here the electron shells are separated by commas. Lithium will be two comma one. Sodium will be 2, 8, 1, chlorine will be 2, 8, 7, and potassium will be 2, 8, 8, 1. 
and here is a shorthand notation for all of the atoms from 1 to 20. In this table, we see that elements in the same family have the same number of outer shell electrons, which I have circled. The outer shell electrons are called the valence electrons, and the outer shell is called the valence shell. The family number in the periodic table tells us how many valence electrons an atom has. For example, family 1 has one valence electron, family 2 has two valence electrons, family 13 has three valence electrons, family 14 through 18 would have four, five, six, seven, and eight valence electrons, except for helium in family 18, which has two valence electrons. Valence electrons are important because they determine the element's chemical behavior. Since the number of valence electrons are the same for a given family, elements in the same family will have similar properties. Family 18. Elements in family 18 have completely filled outer shells. Therefore, the elements in family 18 are inert or non-reactive. These are called the noble gases since they do not react with any element. Challenge questions. Question 1. How many valence electrons does oxygen have and in which shell are they located? Oxygen has six valence electrons and they are located in the second shell. So oxygen's configuration is 2 comma 6. Question 2. Which family in the periodic table has elements with six valence electrons? Elements in family 16 of the periodic table, also known as the oxygen family, have six valence electrons. Question 3. Write the electron configuration for nitrogen. The electron configuration for nitrogen is 2 comma 5. Question 4. Identify the element with the electron configuration 2 comma 8 comma 8 comma 1. The element with this configuration is potassium. Question 5. How many electron shells does sulfur have? Sulfur has three electron shells since it is in period 3. Which period in the periodic table corresponds to elements with four electron shells? Period 4. Question 7. Determine the valence electrons in chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons because it's in family 17. Write the electron configuration for magnesium. Magnesium is 2, 8, 2. What happens to the size of the atom as you go down the family? As you go down a family, the size of the atom generally increases due to the addition of more electron shells. Question 10. What happens to the size of the atom as you go across a period? The atomic size decreases as you go across a period because of the increase in the number of protons in the nucleus. The higher positive charge exerts a stronger pull on the electrons in the same energy level leading to a reduction in the atomic radius as you move from left to right across a period on the periodic table. Number 11. How many valence electrons does bromine have? Bromine has seven valence electrons because it is in family 17. Bromine's number of valence electrons can be better understood when we discuss orbitals in a later video lesson. The electron configuration of bromine is argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5 and if you add the 4s2 and the 4p5 those electrons the total number of outer electrons or valence electrons equals 7 for bromine. Number 12. How many valence electrons does strontium have? Strontium has two valence electrons since it is in family 2. The electron configuration of strontium is krypton 5s2. So the total outer electrons for strontium is two electrons, which is its valence electrons. As you can see, understanding the organization of electrons within an atom is key to unlocking the secrets of the periodic table. I will see you in my next video where we will discuss isotopes, atomic mass, and how to calculate the average atomic mass of atoms. Please subscribe, like and share. Happy learning. Thank you.